while we've already talked about sliders and how to give in numbers with those, we also are going to talk now about how to set text from a user perspective and a slightly different way as well of setting numbers. So uh, let's get rid of these real quick, which I did in the previous video. So if you haven't seen that one, uh, go check it out. But for now, I want to uh, show you the editable text. So we have a normal editable text, a editable text multi-line, and then we have boxed variations of those as well. The only real difference between the boxed variations and the non-boxed variations already is visually obvious, I hope, is that the box variation just has a uh, background. So these are a little bit more flexible, uh, making things look the way that you yourself exactly uh, want them to look. These come with a little bit more like pre-done stuff, but obviously will be slightly less editable as a result of that. Uh, but functionally, they will be the exact same thing. And it really is quite simple how these work. If you go in and you click on them, you can uh, type your text. And with the multi-line one, you can just type text, and when you press enter, it just goes to a new line. It really is that self-explanatory. So how do we get the data out of that to use in our blueprints? Well, if we go over to our event graph, and we go to literally any of these four that have the exact same uh, events on them, we have both on text changed, which I will do a print string for, and we'll just print out the text changed. But then we also have on text committed, which this will run anytime I change the text. So pretty much anytime I add a new character or delete a character from the text, this will only run when the text is committed. So when I press end, you can see this also has a commit method. We can see the different uh, values for that if we just do an equal enum. This is default or when we press enter, when we move the user's focus away to a different widget, or when we just clear the entire thing out. Those are the commit methods uh, for on commit. For this one, I'm also going to just print string uh, the text, but we're going to append uh, the word committed to it, just misspelled because that's how I do. And uh, this will be the editable text box uh, underscore zero which is this one up here, the top one. So you'll be able to see that as I start typing in that, it just shows the entire words that I have typed in so far every time I type a new character. The moment I press enter, it types whatever I typed and commit it. Now, it did it twice there because I pressed enter, and then also when I press enter, it shifted my focus away. So it triggered both of those things. We can actually see that as well if we uh, try to append this enum to string, we will see that I can do all this and then it has enter and clean. So it's not actually shifting the focus, it's technically uh, clearing it because I no longer am typing in it, I suppose. I'm gonna be honest with you, I've never actually run into a situation where I'm using this commit method for any sort of logic at all. It's nice that they give it to you, but for the most part, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> but of course, this would be useful uh, for things like setting a player's name that you can then store in a variable, in your, like your save file, and then you have a name for your character. Now, it does output text. Uh, I don't know if I've complained about this in a previous video uh, or if this was on a live stream at some point. It, I find it a little weird that this outputs text because text is a specific variable type that's supposed to integrate with Unreal's translation system. But these editable text boxes are mostly for taking in user inputted text, meaning that you as a developer aren't going to have that in your translation table. So unless you want to like create pre-existing words that will auto-translate, I suppose that might be useful. For the most part, I don't really see the reason that this is a text. If anybody is watching this and has a good reason for these to be texts rather than strings, uh, please do enlighten me, because I really don't see the use of these being texts. If you're curious about the difference between texts and names and strings, by the way, I do have a full video on it. I'm going to try to remember to add that in the description and as a clickable card on this video. If I didn't remember it, again, scream at me in the comments about it and I will link you to it. Uh, but those are the uh, simple, straightforward ways to add text fields into your game. So this is a text field that you can just type away larger paragraphs of text in, and this is more of a thing where you can like type in names and that type of stuff for 
characters. Now, one little bonus that I want to throw in here because this video is relatively short. We also have this thing called a spin box. And the spin box is uh, just a thing that lets you put in a value, <laughs> a float. So it's really as easy as you might think. It's just more or less the exact same thing that you actually just have on these, right? These are spin boxes, if you think about it. It's just three different spin boxes to make a vector. And that's exactly how these spin boxes work as well. Of course, you can set a minimum value and a maximum value uh, to clamp these two. So I can say, well, actually, if I use this for like field of view, for instance, it probably uses a slider for field of view, but let's just imagine that you use a spin box instead. You can say, well, I actually want the minimum field of view to be like 50 degrees and the maximum to be like 110. So then you can see that the minimum it sets to 50. I can't have it under 50 and then it can go up to 110, but can't go above it. We also have separate slider minimum and maximums. So we can say, well, actually, if I'm using the slider, I want the minimum to be 70 and the maximum to be 90. So that way, just sliding it back and forth will clamp to 70 to 90. But if you manually enter in values, you can go down to 50 and up to 110, but they will still be clamped to those. So you'll see that right now I can go from 70 to 90, but I can also just click on this and give in a value of 60, and that will work just fine. However, I cannot enter a value of 30 because it's going to clamp it to 50. And then, of course, uh, when I try to use the slider uh, again it's going to clamp it between the 70 and the 90 that we gave in so this spin box is kind of like an in-between between sliders and text boxes in a certain way so i wasn't sure in which video to include it but this video is a lot more straightforward a lot shorter so i figured let's throw it into this one and a very big thank you to all my patrons you can see them on screen right now if you want to help support the channel or get any of the project files in any of my tutorials there's a link down below to the patreon page to support me or alternatively as a youtube member and a huge thank you to my cave big brain tier supporters which care more for coding than impulse control earl monserville erno my cave student tier supporters oiku and my cave digger tier supporters Mauricio Farias.